Hello and welcome to DTWG, the prep welcome. Okay, so today's video, we're going to be doing social studies. Okay, and we're going to be looking at the US Constitution and um, looking also at the Bill of Rights. Okay, and some practice questions. Okay, that um, can come out from this particular passage, all right, on under the U.S. Um, Constitution. Okay, it's always good you know the Bill of Rights, all right, which are the ten, first ten amendments. Okay, it's called the Bill of Rights. It was released in seventeen, I think ninety one or ninety two. Okay, that's when it was um, amended. Okay, and put in the Constitution. All right, so. Uh, yeah, it is 1791. Yes, 1791. Just confirm that. All right, so we're going to be going through these questions. Please, if it's your first time on this channel, please um, try to click the um, subscribe button. Be subscribed so you're and click the notification bell so you're instantly notified when we upload an educational video for you. Okay, for your science, your maths, your RLE. All right, and... Um, or you can check our website for summary notes, study guides, also for practice questions uh, here, dtwgdprep.com. You can also join our Facebook group. Very, very wonderful community. Over 20,000 members now supporting each other in the Facebook group community. All right. And also, if you need one-on-one -on -one tutoring, you need math tutoring, you need uh, social studies tutoring, RLA or your science tutoring, one-on-one, -on -one, you can also contact me. I do this at uh, $20 an hour. Just send me a message. I'll leave my email in the video description box of this video. Send me a message and we'll take it off from there. All right. Okay. So, uh, now let's go through this. It says the constitution provides for changing times with a process for amendment or change. Today, the constitution includes 27 amendments. The first 10 amendments is called the Bill of Rights, okay? And it is outlined below. Now, the first amendment is religion and political freedom, okay? That's for an individual right. Second amendment is what? The right to bear arms. Third amendment is the right to refuse to house soldiers in peacetime. Fourth amendment is what protection against unreasonable search and seizure of your property. Okay. Fifth amendment is the right of accused persons to due process of the law. All right. Sixth amendment is the right to a speedy and public trial. Your seventh amendment is the right to a jury trial in civic cases. The Eighth Amendment is protection against cruel and unusual punishment. The Ninth Amendment is the rights of the people to powers that may not be spelled out in the Constitution. All right. And the Tenth Amendment is the rights of the people and the states to powers not otherwise given to the federal government, state, or the people. Okay. So here... We have our practice question number one. Okay, it says, which two amendments provide for changes over time in the circumstances and realities of American life? Okay, now we need to understand this question. Which two amendments provide for changes over time in circumstances and realities of American life? Now, it says, first, now, when you have questions like this, and maybe you don't really get the under, you don't understand it. Let us. We are going to do elimination method. Use the elimination method to try to figure out your answer. Okay. So it says first and second amendment. Let's go read it. This it says religious and political freedom, the right to bear arm. No, it doesn't relate to this. Okay. Changes over time in the circumstances. It doesn't. Fifth and sixth amendments. Fifth and sixth it says right of accused persons to due process of the law, right to a speedy no. This is like um, this is a right to someone who is convicted. So no. So we cross this, we cross this, like we cancel, we cancel. Third and fourth amendment. It says third here says the right to refuse house soldiers, no. Uh, protection against unreasonable, no. So this is a no. Now let's go. Ninth and tenth amendments. Let's read that up. 
Okay, so the ninth and tenth amendment says, the rights of the people to powers that may not be spelled out in the constitution. Okay, this is making sense because it says they provide for changes over time. If there's a sudden change that wasn't spelled out in the constitution, this particular amendment will provide for this. Okay, if it wasn't spelled out. So it says the rights of people to the powers that may not be spelled out in the constitution. So this would help that individual. Then it said nine and 10. 10 is the rights of the people and states to powers or not otherwise given to the federal government, states or the people. Also this would what provide for changes over time in circumstances and realities of American life. That's if something changed that wasn't spelled out in the constitution with these two amendments, you can you know fight for your rights so here i will say this is the right answer but let's check in he says you know you don't just stop here check the final one he says seventh and eighth amendment let's look at seventh say right to a jury no it says protection against no so our uh, best answer is option d do you see that okay now the second question says a family that was forced by the U.S. Army to provide housing and food for a group of soldiers could appeal to the courts based on which amendment to the Constitution. I think we read that where there was a has soldiers here. So is it third amendment? It says the right to refuse to house soldiers in peacetime. So you can use this, uh, uh, you know, this amendment to appeal to the court. Okay, so it says a family was forced by the U.S. Army to provide housing and food for a group of soldiers, for, for a group of soldiers, could appeal to the courts based on which amendment to the Constitution. So it's the third amendment. Okay, so they can appeal to the courts, pointing out to the third amendment. Okay, right to refuse to house soldiers in peacetime. So our right answer here is option B. Okay, now look at this. It says, write the amendments that fall into the categories. You know, the Bill of Rights is divided into three categories. The first category is a right that gives individual freedom. Okay, that's some amendments will fall here. Two is right that protects from government power. And the third one is the rights of the accused and convicted. Okay, so please know these three categories. And we're going to, step, we're going to you know, put everyone here now. Now, the first one, rights that give individual freedom, okay? Individual freedom. So here, religious and political freedom. This is the, if the first amendments give right to individual freedom. So we put amendment one. Now, also, second amendment also does are the right to bear arms, okay? It gives individual freedom. So amendment two. Then, let's check. This says... The right to refuse, no, this is doesn't, it's not directly individual protection against unreasonable, no, not individual. Right of accused, not individual. This is not per jury, no, no, uh, no. Now, uh, look at this ninth amendment. Say the rights of the people to powers that may not be spelled out in the constitution. This is directly to the individual. Okay, so an individual person. So right that gives um, individual freedom, we add amendment what's ninth, the ninth amendment. Okay, I'm writing this in Roman figures, okay, because also it's in the US Constitution, it's also written this way. Okay, if you don't see it in your text this way, you can also use the first, you know, the numbers. All right. Now the second category is right that protects from government power. Now you can see here from government power, the third amendment, okay, the right to refuse to house soldiers. That's the US Army, the government. So we put here three. Let's use the numbers. Amendment three. I do prefer the Roman numerals, actually. All right, amendment three. Now also amendment four, protection against unreasonable search and seizure by uh, the US Army, okay. Um, you know, seizing your property or just searching your, uh, pr uh, your, you know, property. So four, so we put that there. So this rights, this amendment will protect against what? 
government power. Also, let's look at this, the 10th amendment also, the rights of the people and the states to powers not otherwise given to the federal government, states or people. So this would also protect you from any government power under the US, United States of America. So we have 10, all right, which is X, okay? Now, the third one is rights of the accused and convicted. Now, you can see here, accused and convicted, it will be this. The Fifth Amendment will fall here, all right, which is the right of accused persons due to process of the law. Here also the Sixth Amendment, okay, the right to a speedy and public trial. Also the Seventh Amendment, that's the right to a jury trial in civic cases. Then... We have finally the Eighth Amendment, protection against cruel and unusual punishment. Okay, you can see that we have divided all this, the Ten Amendments, into these three categories. Okay, so please make sure you note these three categories, all right, and how to you know, divide them accordingly. Okay, you can see we can count here. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, all Ten Amendments divided into these several categories. Okay, so, I mean, three categories. Okay, so thank you for staying tuned to the end of this video. Um, uh, please do subscribe and um, give this video a thumbs up and share with your friends, family, and loved ones. And also, uh, if you need one-on-one -on -one tutoring, do contact me. And if you want to join the Facebook group, the link I will drop in the video description box of this video. And you can check our website for several summary notes, study guides, practice questions to help you out in your study. Also, finally, don't forget that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Give your life to Christ, for he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. He's the one who's going to lead you to heaven at last. All right? After it, after this life here, there is another life which is in heaven. And for your guarantee to that good, lovely, heavenly life is through Jesus Christ. So today, just accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, okay? And he will do the rest. He would flood your life with love, peace, and joy. That is what actually matters most in life, okay? Life, peace, and joy. And also provision and help he would give to you. All right, so thank you. So stay tuned to DTWG, the prep .com, uh, uh, prep.com, and I'll see you in our next video. Take care.